Hey friends, Kevin here, and today we're going to talk about the very, very basics you need to do a minivan build or even a no-build minivan build. And there's reasons for this. If you've watched other videos here, you know that I preach simple and because it's easy to get overwhelmed and overcomplicated when you start seeing what other people are doing with these extreme builds and ripping the interiors out of their van and redoing them and ripping the floors out. And there's nothing wrong with doing that stuff later on. But you need to get your feet wet with the basics. And I know a lot of people watching this channel, they're just starting out. Maybe they're planning for their first van. Maybe they now have their first van and they're trying to figure out what to do. So you want to start out very, very simple. And while we can get into showers and heat sources and all these other things, let's assume that you're not going to be starting out in extreme temperatures, dealing with some of these extreme problems. Okay? We want to just get the basics out of the way first. And there's videos on this channel for solving all of these other problems that will help you out. But we want to get you started. So those basic things we're going to talk about are a bed, a way to cook, a way to keep some food cold, some lights for nighttime, and some basic entertainment so you don't get lonely and bored while you're on the road. Those are the big ones. So let's get into that one at a time. Number one is going to be a bed. Now I have a video where I built the bed frame in my van, and I also have this video of this really cool no-build bed frame. If I had to do over, quite honestly, I might go that route. But since I already have built mine, pull out bed, and it's able to work for two people, I'm happy with what I have. But for somebody going solo, this no build frame is fine. But here's what you need to understand. With a simple mattress, whatever you're going to use, or even a sleeping bag, you could just throw that thing on the floor. The only reason anybody goes up and puts these things on a platform is for storage because you just don't have much space in a minivan. You're not going to be able to easily do any kind of overhead cabinets. So your storage space, a lot of it is going to be underneath the bed. And that's why you get that bed seven, eight, 10 inches off the floor so you can use some little crates. It's really that simple. Keep it simple starting out. Number two, you need a stove. You need something to cook on. And I did this video not too long ago on propane versus butane. So a lot of people agreed with me. Some people didn't. It's going to be different depending on what part of the country you're in, where you travel to. My choice is propane because I know I can get it anywhere. The little heater I'm going to use is runs off propane anyway. So there's no point in me having to deal with both. So I'm just going to run propane anyway. And the simplest things are these little Coleman stoves that everybody's used for decades anyway. You can get a little one burner one. You can get a little two burner one like I have. For doing bigger breakfast things, it's nice to have the two burner stove. It's nice to be able to have a skillet and doing things on one burner, doing your water for your coffee and stuff on the other burner. So while the stove does take up a little more space, quite honestly turned up on its end, stuck in the back of the van, it really doesn't still take up that much space. It's worth it for the flexibility when you're cooking. So I prefer that two burner stove, but again, that's up to you. But you need a way to cook on the road to be able to heat things up, heat water up for all sorts of different things. So you want a propane based little cook stove. These things are under 50 bucks. Everything I'm showing you here, I'm going to link down in the description so you can jump over to Amazon, see what the current prices are on these exact items I've used and I've used the last three or four years. So they're proven and I know they're going to hold, they've held up for me. So I think they'll hold up for you. Sometimes saving a buck or two or going with some real off-brand crappy something, you're just setting yourself up for problems because you're going to be out on the road in the middle of nowhere and it's going to break and now you're 50 miles from the nearest store where you can go replace it. So spend a little more money and get quality stuff. Number three is going to be a cooler for ice because basic minivan build, you're not going to be running solar. You know, I, if you've seen them, this video here that's the most popular thing I've ever done that shows everything I use. I have a little battery pack. It's not big enough to run any type of 12 volt refrigerator or anything like that. So I use a cooler and all of these month long and longer trips that I've done and back and forth across the country in this minivan for the last few years, 
All we've used are these basic little coolers. They'll keep ice for a day or two, a couple of days on average, regardless of the temperature. So I'm happy with it. Now, you can spend more money. If you already have a more expensive cooler, great, use it. You don't want cheap little styrofoam cooler because that thing's just going to end up breaking, cracking. You're going to have a problem with it. So you want something a little more durable. I've seen these coolers like this go for $60 and $70. On Amazon, uh, the reviews are mixed. I'm going to steer you away from that. I'm going to tell you to go with this Ozark Trail brand that comes from Walmart. Right. These things are about $20. You're looking for something. Usually, instead of quart capacity, it'll tell you can capacity, which is 12-ounce cans. So you want something at a 30-can or 36-can capacity. That's going to give you room for your ice. That's going to give you room to pop six or eight drinks in there, and it's still going to leave you some room for some food on top of that. These things zip up. They're basically cloth. They have a plastic liner inside. The good thing about that is it gets messy. Something leaks. You can take that liner out. You can clean it, put it back in. It's just convenient. All of these things, regardless of what you buy, you can buy a $60 one, you buy a $100 one, the fact is, something's going to rip on it. The zipper's going to break on it eventually. That's just reality. So just go with the cheaper one of these. I think you're, you're going to be just fine. I have two of these. One was given to me by a friend because the zipper, of course, busted. I use it for dry food. The one second one I bought that has the zipper that still works, even as much as we've used it, that's the one I put the ice in and used to cool stuff down. Keep it simple starting out. You can upgrade to all of these other systems and ways of doing things later. But remember, the more electronics and the more gizmos you start introducing into your basic minivan build or no van, no build build, is going to be more things that's going to break. It's going to be more things that's going to malfunction that you're going to have to troubleshoot when you're on the road. And that's not the way you want to spend your time when you're out on the road, you want to be enjoying yourself, not solving little problems after little problems. Number four, lights. I did a whole video on this light, which is rechargeable. It also, if you run out of charge, it has a hand crank on it, so you can crank it for a minute or two, and it'll work for 15 or 20 minutes. It's just a brilliant little design. It works as a night light, a reading light. It's just something to reach over and grab in the middle of the night, flick on. It's, it's just perfect. The things are less than $15 or $16. It's held up really well. I'm happy with it. The other thing you're going to want for your minivan, however, is going to be a set of these little, about this big, rechargeable solar lights. You throw them up on the dashboard, let them charge during the day, and at night, when you get ready to go to bed, you take these things and you stick them outside your van because they're going to be motion activated. That way, if an animal comes up, if some person starts approaching your vehicle, it's going to go off. These things only weigh a couple of ounces apiece. So what you want is to use little Velcro strips. You'll see that in the main minivan video I did onto your glass outside, onto your side glass, onto your rear glass on the hatch, and stick one basically on each side of your vehicle. One on the hood area, one on each side, one on the back. That way again, anybody approaches you, the light's going to come on, you're going to know it. The other advantage to this, but again, motion activated and having them on the windows, outside windows, those sliding doors, because that's generally the way you're going to get in and out. When you start to get out of your van and you start to open that door, it will automatically trigger that light for you so you can see what's outside before you get out of your van in the middle of the night. Simple solutions are the best. These things don't cost very much. They're going to last for several years easily. Number five is going to be entertainment. You're going to need something to entertain yourself with because you're either going to end up like this time of year when it's dark at 5.30 p.m. and you have a lot of time to kill before whatever time you go to sleep, or you're just going to run into some bad weather when it's just 
one of those or two of those rainy days in a row. And if you're trapped in that van with nothing to do, it's going to get to you. Now, most people have all kinds of entertainment and things that they're going to do on their cell phones, but you need to remember when you're traveling, you're not always going to have a cell signal. So you're either going to have to fall back to real books, something that doesn't require a signal, or the reason that I use one of these Amazon Kindle Fires is because being an Amazon member, it comes with that TV service and it will let you download movies and TV shows to that device. And then you have the ability to watch those things offline. So you don't need Wi-Fi. You don't need a cell signal. So no matter where I am, I don't have to worry about, oh man, I don't have this. I don't have that signal. I'm covered. I have plenty of stuff on there, some books, some movies, some TV shows. So when I'm caught in those situations that the weather turns against me, I have entertainment. Because without that, you're just going to slowly go crazy. And, you know, the purpose of this is to get out and enjoy yourself and have fun. It's not to be miserable. It's not to see how much crap that you can endure trying to do van life. It's about enjoyment. It's about relaxation. It's about getting back in tune with nature and getting in tune with yourself. So we want to eliminate all the negatives that we can and make this nice and simple and convenient. And this is the best way that I've found to do it. Now, some of you guys and gals, you may have different things. You may have little hobbies you can work on. You might like to knit and crochet and and make things so you may be covered without this but you know what your personality is you know what you like to do but the main thing is to make sure you have something with you that you can get by with five or six hours on a sleepless night or a bad weather night to entertain yourself now those are the five basic things you're going to have to work out doing van life doing long trips with your minivan build or no van build, whatever you want to call it. These are the things you need to work out in advance. Now, there's other things out there, showers and toilets and, you know, what to do in extreme heat, what to do in extreme cold. And I have videos on this channel for all of this. So if you click on my name, Budget Travel Guy, it will take you over and there's a section for buying your van and there's a section of videos for minivans in particular that will show you all of these different things and different ways to do it. And we'll continue to talk about these things in future videos. But let me know what on here you agree with that you don't agree with. If you do something a little bit different because we all share, we all learn from each other. I've picked up some great ideals over the last few years just from comments that a lot of you have left on my videos. It's a never-ending learning process for all of us. But I've done this enough that and made enough mistakes in the beginning without having any guidance that hopefully I'm able to walk you around some of the holes that you might otherwise fall in. Because we want you to get out. We want you to start doing this. We want you to be able to enjoy doing this. As always, I appreciate you watching, and we'll talk soon. Thank you.